All right, Shalom. We'll get started here shortly. But in the kingdom, we're going to have that power like the angels, but we're going to be in a terrestrial body. In other words, we're not going to be regular terrestrial like we are right now. Because what happened is, in the ancient world, we had that power. We had that power when we were on a level like God's. But what happened is, the Most High took that power from us. Over the generations and over the years, the Lord took that power from us. But we're going to get that back. We're going to get that power back coming into the kingdom. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now it says here, Psalms 82 and 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. This is talking about the Israelite man, number one. That's not talking about so-called white man. That's not talking about the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs. No, that's talking about the Israelite man. We were once gods in the ancient world. In other words, we had that power. But the Most High took that power away from us, and ye shall die like men. And now we're like regular men now. The Lord is going to restore us in the kingdom. And before we get to the kingdom, the Lord is going to restore us to like the way we were in the ancient world. Now, an example of how we were in the ancient world, Isaiah 40 and 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting power, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I'll read it again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Lord is going to renew us like we were in the ancient world. And I'm going to show you examples of how we were in the ancient world when we were in our strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, meaning we're going to be able to fly. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The Lord is going to renew our strength. Now I'm going to get another scripture. Let's go to the book of Psalms 103. Psalms 103 and 5. It says, Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? You see that? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Didn't we read that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the kingdom, we're going to be what you call extraterrestrial. Shall alarm. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakapodash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, we will intimately call Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give a praise on the glory unto the Havokar Adash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes his edification possible. Want to give double honors, Salaki, want to give double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught his truth and real well. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Aki and Wa'akwath as you brothers and sisters make your bodies a living sacrifice. On a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation, right? And uh, by the way, Shabbat Shalom. You know the uh, Shabbat just came in, you know, over here, um, you know, in the Midwest, you know. So, um, you know, Shabbat Shalom to you, sincere, you know, listeners. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. And as you can see, the title of uh, of this lesson here it says "Mortifying the Flesh to Come Back to Godlike Status," and I meant to put our Godlike Status. So mortifying the flesh to come back to our godlike status, right? Because um, as that video was playing there, you know, the opening, the intro, you know, the, the opening video, right? He quoted a scripture or he read the scripture in Psalms 82 and verse 6, right? And uh, this is just something I was meditating. I was meditating upon today, man. You know, um, you know, we, we, we speak about, you know, the, um, you know, we speak about Jacob's trouble often. 
right? But there's no way that we're going to be able to endure Jacob's trouble, right? If we don't prepare our minds and prepare our spirits, right? Before all hell really does break loose, right? And all hell is about to break loose, right? In certain parts of the earth, man, it's, it's great distress already, right? But see the Lord, you know, still grooming us and refining us right now, all right? Those of us, you know, that are part of the hopefully elect, and ultimately what he is cultivating inside of us is what? A mindset, right? And a spirit of discipline and self-control, right? Discipline and self-control, right? Is vital to stay alive, man, all right? Because this is, uh, this, this truth is known as what? A fight, man, all right? Fight the good fight of faith, all right? And um, it's also known as you being in war, Ephesians the sixth chapter, all right? How this is a spiritual warfare. And when you consider a soldier, on the battlefield, a soldier, first and foremost, even before he gets on the battlefield, right? He has to have a high level of discipline, right? He has to uh, be disciplined, you know, to go train, right? He has to be disciplined in his diet. He has to be disciplined in his mindset. Well, it all revolves around a mindset, right? That mindset is what pretty much uh, uh, pro propulsates, if you will, perpetu perpetuates, right, those physical right and tangible uh acts that he actually does right so this is where the lord is dealing with us that is in our mind and he's forging us you know to, to pretty much learn how to be disciplined whether we feel like doing something or, or not right and ultimately at the end of the day right we're 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 um we're a living sacrifice man right and this is a part of making our bodies a, a living sacrifice is by being disciplined and uh and maintaining self-governance right because we're about to govern the whole world Right underneath our Lord and Savior Yahweh, uh, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Right, but how how are we going to be able to to judge, right, and govern, you know, the world and, and the inhabitants thereof, and we can't govern and, and judge, and, and and ourselves, man. All right, so let's grab this here. So like, give me one second. Let me turn this fan on. All right, so let's grab this here. In the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and 6. As a matter of fact, give me one second. I want to grab Luke the ninth chapter first, man. This is Luke chapter 9 and 23. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking. He says, and he said to them all, and that all he's who's, who's addressing is his disciples. All right. And um, you know, the the uh the elect, the hopefully elect in these times, right? We're his disciples, right? And even when you go into you know, that root word disciple is what? Discipline. <laughs> right? It's discipline. Right? So as being a, 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 a follower or a disciple of Yahweh Shah, right? One must be disciplined in order to learn. Right? We're going to get, you know, we're going to, I got a couple of scriptures in mind. Right? It's all going to tie in, you know, and Lord willing you, Akim, will Akwat be edified and says, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. See, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's right. So as being followers of Yahweh by Shema Shah, right, it comes with self-denial, meaning putting yourself on the back burner. Why? Because this is a sacrifice. Right. We're offering our bodies up as living sacrifices, man. The whole point right, of this thing is for it to hurt. Right. So so you can reap the fruits. Right. Of that, of the discipline, of the self-denial. Right. Because there will be a reward and you have to believe that there's going to be a reward. Right. For the self-denial and selfless acts and ultimately. Right. Teaching this truth. Right. And, and living this truth is the ultimate form. Right. Of self-denial, man. And these are the ones, these are the spirits that Yahweh Bashmah Shah is going to redeem, man. Because when you look at you know, the overwhelming majority of the people dwelling here upon planet earth nobody is practicing uh self-denial nobody is, is being is nobody is disciplined nobody is is, is uh self-controlled this is why scripture says in second the seventh chapter all right let's grab that real quick and we're going to come back here to luke luke the ninth chapter second Ezra chapter seven <clears throat> in verse uh, 44 let's start at verse 43 but the day of doom, right, giving you the context, and that day of doom is the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah, which is nigh at the doors. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. That's right, the end of Esau Edom's rulership. Now let's see what accompanies his rulership. 
right? How it's going to be ruled and the beginning of the immortality for it to come. Wherein corruption is past, intemperance is at an end. See that? So intemperance being the end, right, proves that that's <laughs> that accompanies Esau Edom's rulership, man. All right, because we know Esau is the end of the world, second Ezra six and nine, right? And it says intemperance is at an end. Now let's grab this word intemperance, right? Because you have spirits, right? That that that's pretty much. You know, uh, going against the grain in this in this in this world, man. While everybody else is intemperate. Well, let's get this definition, and we're going to expound upon it. Intemperance, right? This is an online etymology dictionary, early 15th century. Lack of restraint, right? Lack of restraint. Nobody knows how to restrain themselves, right? This is why America, right, is uh it far surpasses all other you know parts of the world when it comes to obesity. Right, lack of restraint when it comes to sexuality. Right, you're people are natural brute beast. Right, when you don't have a self governance, you're likened to a beast in the eyes of Yahweh Bashamal Shah. Right, hence the reason why he says, Walk in the spirit and fulfill not the lust of the flesh. Which that word flesh in the Greek, right, the Greek word for flesh is sarx, which literally means the animal nature within man. So when you're intemperate, when you're uh, when you lack self restraint, right, you're likening it to a you're likening it to an animal, man. You're likening it to a, a beast, and Yahweh Bashmal Shah does not take pleasure in anyone, right, that is roaming around planet Earth, right, without any type of uh, uh, sense, man, without being governed by wisdom. So lack of restraint, uh, it says, ooh, immoderate use of wine immoderate use of wine right and and ultimately you know the wine that people uh cannot restrain themselves from right is the wine that esau forces down everybody's throat right which is his lies his deceptions right his philosophies his democracy all these particular uh, uh pretty much you know just the way of of his man's system right edomite supremacy right that's his wine man and people guzzle that shit down, which does what? Makes you intemperate, right? Any type of lust or right? any type of uh, fetish that you have, it can be pleased here in Babylon the Great, man. And not just in Babylon the Great, which is America, but all throughout the four corners of the earth, right? Because this place has polluted the whole planet Earth, right? With this evil tentacles of intemperance, man. Right? So it says, uh, uh, it says opposite of, so now it's going to give you some antonyms, right? Opposite of moderation, sobriety, discretion. See that? Discretion, self-control. See, so this this word intemperance, right? It, it, <laughs> when you, well, we just read, we just read the definition of it. And we just read the antonyms, right? And the people that's going to be the opposite of, of those things is the elect, man. And this is why scripture says here in the, in the, I believe, what is that? Second Ezra, the, um, let me find that real quick. Let me look at my Bible. I know exactly where it is. Let me just, uh, yep. Second Ezra 7 and 55. Yep. Second Ezra chapter 7 and 55. Let's start right here at verse, uh, 52 for the context it says and that the glory of the most high is kept to defend them which have led a weary life that's right the elect right that have made themselves or they are pilgrims in the planet earth right uh, having a weary life man whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all right and this is the wicked speaking it says and that there should be shewed a paradise whose fruit endureth forever wherein is security and medicine since we shall not enter into it for we have walked in unpleasant places and that the faces of them which have used abstinence, right? The faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. See that? Now, who are those, right? Who are those that's going to be shining, right? Because they have used abstinence, right? In this world, it's the elect. Now, abstinence doesn't mean that, you know, you over here, you ain't, you know, you ain't popping nothing, all right? 
No, that word, let's get this word abstinence real quick. Abstinence. Forbearance and indulgence of the appetite. See? Self-restraint. All right? Starvation. Right? Which is what? Fasting. Right? Who's practicing these things in these times, man? The elect. The elect is 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 um is uh being cultivated in, in abstinence, man, which is going to cause what our faces to shine, Lord willing, right? Our faces to shine as the stars of the sky, as the stars of the firmament, man, as scripture just said. All right, so let's go back here to these scriptures. Um, where are we at? Let me finish out second Ezra 7 to 44. It says, intemperance is at an end, right? Lack of lack of self-restraint. So this 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 system that we ruling in, or it's like it, this system that we living in. Right with all this, uh, um, you know, lack of uh, discipline, lack of morals. Right, it's at an end, man. Yeah, how about Shmuel Shah's about to cut this off? Right, it says infidelity is cut off, and what's infidelity? Right, lack of loyalty. Right, nobody's faithful to nothing. It says righteousness is grown up, and truth is sprung up. See that? So let's grab here. Let's grab here in the book of Luke. 9 and 23 again he says and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself right let him have abstinence right self-control right you putting yourself aside see this is this is what's forwarding us to come back to our godlike status it says and take up his cross daily and follow me and let's go into the word cross real quick Strong's G forty seven sixteen. Strong's G forty seven sixteen. Staras. Staras. Okay. It says um Yep, if, if you can see this definition down here, Strong's definition, it says what? Self denial. See? You're denying yourself. So you taking up your cross is synonymous with denying yourself, man. Because once again, being this truth is a sacrifice. There's going to be particular things, right? That's going to be re that's required of us. And with us being in this flesh, you just don't feel like doing it. You know, <laughs> you just don't feel like doing it, man. You think all the men, of the Lord, right? They felt like prophesying, you know, they felt like, you know, uh, being charitable all the time. No, we're all subject to the same, you know, passions and this weak nature. Right, but a, a, a part of following Yahweh Shah, right? We take up our, we're supposed to take up our cross daily, man, right? And deny ourselves, right? And have that self control. So let's grab this here in the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter, because oh no, let's go to what we were, what we were originally holding here in Psalms eighty two, right? It's showing how this is going to bring us back to our godlike status, right? And Shalom. You know, the Akimah Aqua tuning in. So this is Psalms 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. Now, gods, they are not governed by their flesh. They are not brought into subjection by anything of the earthly realm. Right? But here in these times, we are. This flesh is is is, is a um is like an anchor, man, to where it keeps us back. Right from from being, you know, um, you know, from being in our in our proper order, if you will. So I, he says, for, so I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but you shall die like men. Why? Because of this flesh corruption. And corruption reigns in the flesh, he says, and fall like one of the princes. Right. And this is what we're fighting so earnestly to get back to is this status right here as gods, man. Right. Not being governed by anything of this world. And that's that's the importance of mortifying the flesh daily. Yes, it hurts. Right. To, to, to you know, deny yourself. Right. Mortify the flesh. As a matter of fact, let's grab that scripture. I've been quoting it a couple of times. Colossians, the third chapter. Right. Um, yeah. Colossians chapter three. Man, I want to get to the point. Let's go ahead and give verse one. And as you see, the title says, put on the new self. Right. And what's that new self? All right. Going back to the godlike status. And this time it's going to be way better because this time we're not going to be in this flesh in these vile, corruptible bodies, man. 
All right. So before we actually, before Yahweh Shah actually close us with those heavenly bodies, right? We're being clothed in the spirit right now. So ultimately, our mindset, right, and our spirit is going to match the bodies that we're about to be given. All right. So this is why we got to love what we're becoming, you know. And um, you know, I did a video a while back, you know, giving an analogy of a of a butterfly, man. You know, a butterfly. You know, it starts off as what? You know, a hairy caterpillar, man. You know, a worm, which the Lord calls us a worm, right? In Isaiah the 41st chapter, <laughs> right? <laughs> he says we're a worm, but ultimately what this truth does, it transforms us into that new self. It transforms us, right, to where it's just like a butterfly, right? He, a, a caterpillar doesn't stay a caterpillar the whole time. It, it does what? It eats a whole bunch. All right, when you when you actually you know you get on YouTube you know after this video or whatever you get on YouTube and look at the um the process of a of, a, uh, of the transformation of a butterfly, all right that caterpillar bro it it's, it eats a shitload bro and that's how that's how we should be right now eating this truth the what did he tell Ezra devour right he said devour wisdom you know roughly paraphrasing all right he told Ezekiel eat the whole roll and what does that do that transform you right into this new creature. Right. But a part of that, it comes with discipline, self-denial. Right. Mortifying the flesh. So let's let's read Colossians three and one. If you be then risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above. And that's right. We're risen with Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, man. Right. It was Ephesians, the second chapter. Let's get that real quick. Ephesians two and one. All right. Because we were we were dry, dead bones in the valley, man. But this word. Has quickened us, so we we have risen with Yahweh Shah. And what he tell the, uh, those those Pharisees in uh, John the second chapter, he says in three days, all right, I will build up this temple, right? He says, you know, you, you could uh, I'll tear down this temple in three days, I'll build it up. And he was speaking about the temple of his body, which we make up his body, man. So on the third day, pursuant to what Hosea six and one, Revelation eleven chapter, right, Daniel the twelfth chapter, we have been risen with Yahweh Shah. Because we're following the head. So he says, Ephesians 2 and 1, and you have he quickened, right? Meaning brought back to life, who were dead in trespasses and sins. All right. So let's gra grab this again in Colossians 3 and 1. If you then be risen with the Mashiach, risen how? Being quickened by this word. Seek those things which are above. And what's above? Right? Rulership. Right? Being, uh, you know, uh, being at one with Yahweh Bashamal Shah. Scrap that word above. And ultimately, it starts with this wisdom. That's why uh, scripture says in Proverbs 24th chapter, I believe, I believe it's 24th chapter, it says wisdom is too high for a fool. See, and that's why, you know, uh, two thirds of our people will not be able to, to grasp this information. You know, they're like little toddlers, you know, in a grocery store and they're trying to reach for something on the top shelf that they really want. But you, they just can't grab it. It's too far above them. Wisdom is too high for a fool, man. But see, we've been risen up to a new height with Yahweh by Shemal Shah. We've been risen from the dead, and now he's given us access to grasp it, man. And now once we grasp it, he says, what? Hold fast to what you have, man, so no man can take your crown. All right, so let's get this word um, above, Strong's G507. I know, it says, I know, uh, upwards, above, on high, the quarters of heaven, and heaven is a condition all right, heaven is conditioned here on earth, which means what? It's ultimately, rulership, man. And uh, we're going to grab that in Wisdom Solomon here in a second. You know, have you want rulership? You know, what, what has to come before it? So let's finish this out of Colossians 3 1. If you then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above, where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. Yeah, that's right. He has, Yahweh Shah has all power and dominion and authority. And now, yeah, yeah, I was shy. As, <laughs> Revelation second chapter, he said he's going to give us that, that power as well, man. But it comes with self denial, right, and discipline upon our parts first. So he says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, All right? Because we're gods, man. We're being transformed to gods. Gods are not, you know, uh, uh, concerned about their life is not dictated and swayed by things. Of this earthly realm they're above it man you know <laughs> you 
You know, I'm speaking to myself mainly, man. We got to be above these, these, these petty ass, minuscule things up on earth. Because all of it is just a smoke screen, really. When it's all said and done, all these things that happen in our daily lives is all a smoke screen. It's ultimately a test to see if, if, if you're really going to rise above it, man. We're better than all this shit, man. We're gods. All right. We're not slaves. We're not, we don't, <laughs> we're not under subjection to anything, man. Except Yahweh Bashmal Shah. And this word, man, this truth. So it says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are for ye are dead. That's right. We're dead here, man. We have nothing. We don't have a status here. All right. We don't have a, we don't have a life here, man. All these particular comforts and you know so-called life that we do have here is really about to be gone in these upcoming uh, uh, months, man. Hell, it could be days. It just takes that, that perfect event <laughs> to change everything, man. So we don't, we have nothing here, man. But that's good. That's good. So he says, "For you are dead, and your life is hid with Hamashiach in the Most High." When Hamashiach, who is our life, that's right. Yahweh is our life, man. And there is no life apart from him. Why? Because <laughs> he, he's the Alpha and the Omega, man. He's life in and of itself. He's the creator. So it says, when Hamashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members. See, now why is it speaking about, right? Once Yahweh Shah comes, that's when our life is going to actually be here and then it speaks about more he says therefore mortify your members proving that this 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 action right here of mortifying our flesh is what's going to that, that's what's contingent upon us right getting close to those heavenly bodies man and being a part of that first dominion let's grab this word mortify here uh this is strong's g3499 strong's g3499 Nekrao. Nekrao. Okay. It says to make dead, put to death, slay, worn out. It says of an impotent old man to deprive of power. See that? Deprive of power. Deprive of what of power? Your flesh. All right? Your wants, your desires, your needs. All right? This is ultimately what it means, right? To, to uh, what did Yahweh Shah say in Luke the ninth chapter? Uh, he says, if any man shall seek to save his life, he shall lose it. But if any man shall lose his life for my name's sake, he shall keep it, right? So if you want to really keep a life, if you want to have life, you got to do away with your life, man, right? Speaking to myself, you know, once again, first and foremost, we got to do away with our life, you know? We have nothing here. And once that, you know, truly resonates and sets in, you know, man, hey, <laughs> yeah, how about Shemal Shah will take us to even a, a higher level, man? Ultimately, where we were actually trained. Hey, what did he say in Zechariah? I believe it was Zechariah, the, uh, the, either the 12th or 14th chapter. He says, in that day, the house of David shall be as God, man. The house of David shall be as God. See? But first and foremost, you got to be contrite. You got to be broken. Broken in his flesh, man. You have to, you know, mortify the deeds of his flesh. Let's go back here to Colossians, the third chapter and the fifth verse. Mortify, therefore, your members, meaning put to death. And what are those members speaking about the flesh? All right. The things in, the, in these vile bodies, it says, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, concu evil concupiscence. All right, let's get that word. Concupiscence desire craving longing desire for what is forbidden lust right <laughs> and these are the things this is how death was brought into the world evil concupiscence lust all right it came through the woman as scripture says all right but ultimately all right it fell upon you know us man the, the sons of adam all right adam and, and his sons the sons of god and man what a great fall we had Right, so now in order to get back to that godlike status, it requires what? Doing the opposite of what we did, man. We gotta mortify, mortify, it's like you mortify these things, put to death these lusts, man. And once again, it's hard. 
right? Because we live here in a society, right, <clears throat> that Esau has created, right? Which what was that first John, the second chapter, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those things, those three things is what Esau plays on, right? To keep the sons of God in a trodden down estate, man. The lust of the flesh, right? Whatever type of fetish, whatever type of desire, craving you have that's ungodly, right? It's out there, man. It's made accessible easily, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, right? Everything glamorous, right? Everything looks like it's glittering gold. Right, but at the end of the day, it's death. Everything here is death, man. So it takes self control and discipline to stay away from this, man. That's what we're giving this truth for. So we can have that discernment. The Lord told us, he, He's telling us straight up what this shit is, man. What this rulership is all about. It's death. And this is why 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, the Lord says, What? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Right along with Esau. So it says, uh, so it was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, man. And that pride is, man, that pride is a motherfucker, man. You know, so lucky for my French. But that has to be mortified, man. And ultimately, all these sins, you know, any sin that you can think of ultimately stems from pride. Which pride is rooted in what? Idolatry. You know, if you're prideful, that's rooted in idolatry. Right? <laughs> hey, it was Sirach the 10th chapter and 12th verse. For the beginning of pride is when one, when a man's heart departed from his maker. That's idolatry. Why? Because now you have put yourself in a you put yourself in a mindset, right? That uh that whatever that thing is or that person is, right, that's outside of Yah the confines of Yahweh Bashma Shah, that is now your God. Whether well, it may be yourself. Or a thing or another person, man. So it says, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which, oh, man. Hey, I forgot it's even said that. It says, which is idolatry. That's the spirit, man. I forgot that scripture even is, it, it, it said that at the end, which is idolatry. See, and this is why the Lord is coming back with so much fury man and so much anger all right because what he sees here in america and not just america but really the whole world but especially here in america is america's just one big idol man you know double rebellion maribotham right in jeremiah the 50th chapter just like nimrod man so nonetheless let's grab this here in the book of first corinthians let's go ahead and get straight to the point in this lesson didn't intend for it to be this long all right, but this first Corinthians, the ninth chapter, <clears throat> in verse, uh, we can start right here at verse 23. So he says, And this I do for for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker therefore thereof with you. And he was basically speaking about becoming all things to all men. Verse 24, know you not that they which run in a race uh run all, and that's right. This truth is also is, is known as a fight, right? And it's also known as a race. It's known as as as, um, as war, right? But nonetheless, he says, "Know ye not that they which run in a race run all." Right, that's right. This is a marathon, man. It's not a sprint; it's a marathon, right? And just as uh, uh, any long distance runner, right? Well, let, let's continue to read before I before I break it down. It says, "Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain." Now let's grab this word. Run. Run. He says, run that you may obtain. It says, run. Strong's G, 5143. Treco. Where you get the word uh, trek. Or, I mean, it's like a track. So it says, a person's in haste. And that's right. And what are we running with? This truth. Habakkuk, the second chapter. All right. Make it plain upon table so that he that uh, readeth can run. So it says a person's in haste of uh, of those who run in a race course metaphor of doctrine rapidly propagated. See that? So those who run, right? Let's read this again now with that understanding of doctrine rapidly propagated. 
So he says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, meaning teach this doctrine, that you may obtain, that you may obtain. And what's that prize? Undefiled rewards, as it says in Wisdom of Solomon, the fourth chapter. Right? Verse 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery, and what's that word strive mean? To contend, to fight. And we're fighting for the mastery, man. Right? As, as scripture says, you know, uh, um, how it has to be done lawfully. We have to stay within the confines, right, of the rules that Yahweh Bashem as has told us that we got to fight by, man. We can't try to do this thing our own way. And this is why discipline is needed. Self-control is needed. So it says, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it for a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Yeah, like Floyd Mayweather, right? Now he over there in the boxing ring, he's doing that, you know, for, for corruptible gain, right? Whether it may be the, the, the cars, the money, right? The belt. Because all that's going to perish. But we're doing it for an incorruptible crown, for an incorruptible prize, which is what? The kingdom, man. Glorified bodies. So let's grab this. Let's read it one more time. And we're going to get this word temperate. So he says, that every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Let's get this word temperate. Strong's G, 1467. Hekratuamai. Okay, and what does it say? To be self-controlled. Continent. See? Continent, meaning restraint. To be self-controlled. It says to exhibit self-government. So before we govern and control... Right, these uh, these other people, man. The Lord is teaching us how to govern and control ourselves, and it all starts with that with the proper mindset. That's the power of this truth. See, you know, because you got a lot of people they read the Bible, but the power is actually doing what it says. That's when you experience the power, man. There's power to be obtained, bro. You know. That's why the Lord says, and was that James 1 and 22, be ye not hearers of the word only, but be ye doers. Because there's power in actually doing it, man. Matter of fact, let's grab this real quick in Luke. Luke the 11th chapter. Then we're going to go back here to 1 Corinthians. I just want to get to this first. Uh, yep. Luke 11 and 28. This is Yahweh Shah speaking. Yahweh Shah replied. But even more blessed, right, are all who hear the word of the Most High and put it into practice. See, you actually have to put these things into practice because the power resides in practicing it. Now, when you go into that word practice, because practice, that's a heavy word. That's a word that, that a lot of people, right, uh, escapes. It escapes your memory. It goes over their head, right? Practice, it says uh, to follow or employ uh to carry on a profession yeah this is this is a profession this is a job a career it says to do or perform repeatedly or habitually see that so he says blessed are those who put it into practice meaning blessed are those who do this thing habitually repeatedly right each and every morning you're doing the same thing you're waking up you're dropping on your knees right you're praying Right, you you're starting to listen to videos, you are reading, right? You're calling on your high shot, you're getting you getting clothed in your right mind, right? You, you're mortifying your flesh, and you do that every day. That's gonna take self-control because every day you're not gonna feel like doing it. So this is why Paul says, right? Uh uh, he every man that striving for the mastery is temperate in all things, meaning self-controlled in all things, because we got to do this every day, habitually repeatedly just like noah look at noah man all right noah was building that ark for what uh around 120 years he was moved by the fear of the lord right hebrews 11th chapter right says by the fear of the lord you know noah was persuaded of things to come right and built an ark to the saving of his soul i mean it's lucky for the saving of his house but one thing you also have to take in consideration right noah was also in the same flesh we in Although they were much of a mightier status back then, but nonetheless, 
still have flesh and blood and bones, right? And subject to like passions, right? So there were days to where Noah probably didn't feel like going out there on the ark, man. Now, of course, scripture doesn't say that, right? But you can spiritually, you know, extrapolate these things, man. Because we all go, we're all subject. Hey, what was that? Romans 8th chapter. All of creation was subject to vanity. We we're made, you know, uh, subject to vanity, right? Including Noah. All the holy men that we read of. All right? So as he was, you know, diligent in building the ark, there were days, man, to where he probably didn't feel like it, but he still did it. He still did it. Why? He had discipline and self-control. He was disciplined to build that ark, man, whether he felt like it or not to. What, what did it produce? It produced salvation. So let's go back here. And that's what we're doing, man. We're building a spiritual ark. So it takes self-control and it takes discipline, man. It says, uh, going back to this word temperate, to exhibit self-government, conduct oneself temperately. It says, uh, in a figure drawn from athletes in in it's like a who in preparing themselves for the games, right? <clears throat> Abstain from unwholesome food, wine, and sexual indulgence. And we could use it spiritually, man. These other philosophies, right? Anything outside of this truth. That's unwholesome food and wine and, and sexual indulgence, man. And everybody's drunk off, off of this Babylon juice, man. But we got to be uh, self-controlled, man, and disciplined. To abstain from it, to be sober. So let's continue to read. He says, I, I therefore so run, in this verse 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to my Salakia, so when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let's read that again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection instead of his own, instead of his flesh bringing him into subjection. Right. He brought it into subjection. Right. That's a godlike mentality, man. So let's grab this uh, this word or this phrase, keep under. And man, these 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 words you know, going to the definition. Of these, man, it's, it's, it's a lot of meat on. So that's why we're going into a lot of these words tonight. Strong's G, 5299. Hupo Piazzo. All right. <clears throat> it says to beat black and blue. <laughs> and it doesn't mean physically beating yourself. You know, you get a fucking rock and you bang your head against it. Oh, I'm mortifying my flesh. No, it's all spiritual, man. All right. To beat black and blue, to smite as to one causes bruises and livid spots. Like a boxer. See that? Like a boxer. Why? Because we're in a fight, man. We're in this fight of uh, faith. Like a boxer, one buffets his body. All right. When you look at uh, Floyd Mayweather, the, you know, these these are uh, professional, you know, golden glove, you know, boxers. Right. <clears throat> you may see them right, punching, punching on their abs, their abdominals, man. All right. That's them buffeting their body. Right. Taking blows, disciplining themselves, hardening themselves, mortifying themselves. They do that every day habitually. They put it into practice. They they listen to what the words that their coach told them to do, but they, they just didn't stop there. They they did what was told unto them, and through that, this is why you know you have such great fighters and great run uh, runners, man. All right. So with us obtaining this, this inc these incorruptible crowns, these same principles apply. All right. So it says, like a boxer, one buffets his body, handle it roughly. Yeah, you, you can't you can't baby the flesh, man. You can't play around with sin. Oh, well, it's just, you know, I'm just going to do it this one time. No, you got to treat this shit roughly, man. Hey, like Job, it says that he uh, he shunned, he eschewed evil. You know, he eschewed evil, man. He hated evil. All right. Uh, what is that? Proverbs, the eighth chapter. Ye that fear the Lord, right, hate the evil and love the good. All right. So you got to handle the flesh. You got to handle sin roughly, man. Because if not, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna handle you roughly and destroy you, man. So it says handle it roughly, disciplined by hardships. And this is why the Lord puts us through these uh, fiery trials and hardships, man. And when we go through it, yeah, it hurts. But ultimately, right? 
ultimately we're going to look back at it and we're going to rejoice, man. We're going to look at, you know, how spiritually in shape we got, man. You got spiritual eight packs, you know. <laughs> Why? Because the Lord is, uh, is cultivating uh, a discipline and self-control in us, man. To where we'll be spiritually fit and built up for the time of Jacob's trouble. So it says, metaphor to give one intolerable annoyance. Yeah, you got to annoy the flesh. Just as much as the flesh and your own desires annoy you, you got to annoy it. You got to annoy it with the spirit, man. Deny yourself. Right? Partaking to, you know, spiritual activities, man. You know, read more. Fast more. And the whole thing, you know, it's supposed to be a fight. You know, it wouldn't be a fight. It wouldn't be a fight, you know what I'm saying, if, you know, just 24-7, you was doing what was right, you know, you always reading, you always studying, you always, you know what I'm saying, fasting, you know, but it, it's a sacrifice, man, the Lord makes it hard for a reason, he makes it hard for a reason, man, you know what I'm saying, because he, he puts us to a higher level than he does everybody else, you know, so we could come back into, he treats us just as a father, man, you know, we're coming back to our to our rightful, you know, positions as gods, man. You know, Yashallah, he prints power, right? When you look at our forefather Jacob, man, he was wrestling that angel, right, with 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 the uh, with his leg out of socket, man, all night. But he denied the flesh. You don't think, it, hey, man, Jacob, bro, <laughs> he wasn't. He didn't have. Jacob didn't have a glorified body when he wrestled that angel. Let that sink in. He had the same bodies we got. Yeah, I'm sure he was of a, of a bigger stature because men were bigger back then. All right, but nonetheless, he had this. Our forefather, Yaiqua, he had the same flesh we got. He didn't have a, a glorified body when he wrestled that angel, but he denied himself. He's like, man, fuck my leg, man. I, I want this blessing, bro. I want this blessing. All right. He was looking at the future generations of us in these times, man. Our forefather was a man of foresight, man. He was looking at us today like, man, if I, if I get this blessing, if I mortify my flesh, look what's going to happen to my seed, man. My seed are going to be rulers with, with, with the king himself. All right. This is a part of us surnaming ourselves, as it says in Isaiah 44th chapter. Right. How in the latter days, we're going to surname ourselves, you know, Jacob, man. Surname ourselves Israel. You know, not just. You know, putting on our Facebook page, you know, y'all shout. No, man. No. It's talking about surname yourself in your in a mind, man. You're coming back to your heritage knowing that you come from a strong lineage, you know. This is why particular things like uh, in our culture, such as fasting, you know what I'm saying? Day of atonement, right? There's, there ain't really no other nations, man. There ain't no other nation, nationality of people, right, whose uh, culture you know, requires, you know, self-control and discipline, right? All these other, this, this is why, you know, most people are in the world, they're either Christians, they're, they're, uh, they're uh, 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 Islamic, you know, they're, they're Kemet or whatever else, man, because that's, that shit, it all caters to the flesh. But this truth right here, you got to man the fuck up, man. And this, this is the only, bro, this is, this truth right here makes you deny yourself, man. This is a fight, but I don't want to ramble. All right, so let's keep let's keep reading on this definition. It says to give one intolerable annoyance, to beat one out, wear one out. All right, it says, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it on that. Yeah, that was it on that. So it says, let's read that one more time. Let me get it in the NLT real quick. First Corinthians 9 to 27. The NLT says, uh, Let's start at verse 26. Uh, so I run with purpose in every step. All right. Everything has to be calculated, man. All right. We're not doing anything haphazardly or in vain. You know, wearing yourself out. It says, I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. All right. And how do athletes train themselves? Right, they're disciplined. They wake up early in the morning. All right, it's like it's like clockwork, man. Whether they feel like it or not, it's like clockwork. But once they go into that actual 
once they go into that actual fight or that actual, you know, uh, marathon, they're going to pass with flying colors, man. It says, otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, all right, because he was he basically saying, if I don't do these things, otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified, man. See? It's going to be a lot of Israelites, man, this, this thought that they were in the right way, but they're going to be disqualified, all right, because the mortifying the flesh, all right, and, and being self-controlled, and governing oneself was not put into practice, right? Hey, what do you, how shall I say in Matthew the seventh chapter? Many shall say unto me, Lord, Lord, we, did we not prophesy in thy name? All right, meaning they was preaching to others, but they were disqualified, man. He said, I never knew you, All right? You didn't do what I required of you. You didn't deny yourself, man. That's ultimately what this truth is about, man. Saying, fuck this flesh, All right? We're supposed to be gods. That's not just a, a scripture we read. You know, and bring out the highways and byways, you know. You know, we're God, man. You know, we above all. Bro, listen, man. Hey, as Elder Ariala, well, all the elders down here, especially, man, down here in Dallas, man, they've been really hammering the point, bro. All right. This is a mindset. This is this is real life. This is life or death that we're dealing with, man. We trying to come back to our godlike status. This is what is what is, what is required. All right. So let's get uh Let's get this in the book of Sirach, the, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> in the GNT version, we'll probably wrap it up on this one. But this is uh, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, man. Uh, I know I say that almost every lesson. But uh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, this is Sirach, the sixth chapter. Um, yep, right here. And in the 19th verse <clears throat> in the GNT. Give me one second. It says, um, let's start at verse 18. See, right, 6 and 18. My child, learn to value wisdom while you were young. And what's what's wisdom? What's the root of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. All right. So it says, learn to value wisdom while you were young, and you will be you will still be able to find her when you grow old. Work as hard to find wisdom as a farmer works to plow and plant his fields then you can expect a good harvest yeah that's right you know because once you you know uh plow plow that ground right then you sow those seeds now you just gotta wait you gotta water that you gotta water the vineyard and you just gotta wait it says you will have to work at it for a while but you will soon be enjoying what you have earned that's right and that's in the same boat we in right now we just on the, we just got the mindset just grinding. We ain't trying to get rewarded right now. It's not the time to be rewarded right now. All right, it will come soon. We we know we believe through faith that we'll be rewarded. But right now we just gotta have that mindset of being filled, niggas, man. We just out here in the field just working, grinding this thing out every day, being disciplined, just working. We'll, we'll, let me grab this real quick. So like it. This would be a good time to bring this scripture out. Sirach 51 <clears throat> in the GNT in verse uh, 30. Do your duty at the proper time. And what's our duty? The things that Yahweh Shah told us, man. Go out to the highways and byways, man. As many as you uh, find, bid them to the marriage, right? Be brotherly, right? Uh, give alms, right? Mortify the flesh. So do your duty at the proper time. And this is that proper time. And the Lord at the time he thinks proper will give you your reward that's right man so this is why we shouldn't be expecting a reward right now because this is not the time for the reward but at that time when Yahweh sees fit that's when we'll get our reward for the hard work that we putting in and you got to believe you're going to get that all right hebrews 11 chapter and the sixth verse all right for uh for he let me get that i don't want to butcher it uh Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah, you got to have faith that he will reward your diligence, reward your your uh, your discipline. All right. All this discipline and hard work ain't going to go to waste, man. All right. <clears throat> so let's read this. 
verse uh well in the middle in the middle part it says you will have to work at it for a while but you will soon be enjoying what you have earned all right multiplying those talents we're going to be rulers over cities it says undisciplined people check this out undisciplined people which is most of these people in the world man right except the elect only the elect are going to be disciplined so undisciplined people finds wisdom's demands too hard yeah they don't want to do the lord's work man because it's too hard for them they're sluggards all right the real workers of this society are the elect man all right this is the only work that's that's beneficial and fruitful so undisciplined people find wisdom demands too hard and don't have enough determination to meet them see that it takes determination in this thing man all right discipline self-control having that single eye it says her requirements are a heavy it's like it her requirements are a burden heavier than they are willing to bear and they lay them they quickly lay them aside that's right and what's those requirements that's the burden what well, yahweh shah said what's that matthew 11 chapter learn of him matthew 11 and 28 come unto me all ye that are all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you which is that burden which is wisdom's burden and learn of me see so learning <laughs> being disciplined being a disciple that's too much for people man you tell me i gotta go to camp every week then i got I man, I gotta do videos uh, constantly, man. Frequently, yes, yes. This is our reasonable service, All right? Fuck the flesh. Yeah, you may not feel like doing it. So what? All right, the Lord, He's gonna reward us, man. Just work, work. <laughs> you know, work, man. And work is a hey, scripture says. Um, let's grab that in Sirach, the seventh chapter. And even for you women, everybody, even children, everybody, man, hey, hey, listen, anybody can get this work with Yahweh Bashamah Shah. We all, uh, you know, if you're Israelite, you know, you're tied in along with this covenant, man. So the Lord requires everybody, young, old, man, woman, right, cattle, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody got to be working. Everybody got to ha have a hand on the plow. If you're a woman, right, your yoke is what? To do what your man tell you to do. Stay in order. If you're children, obey your parents. All right? Do what they tell you to do. If you're a man, you already know. All right? Listen to what listen to what your listen to what Yahweh Shah, our husband tells us to do, man. And you can't hate it, man. You can't hate it. You gotta you gotta love working. Uh Sirach 7 to 15. Hate not laborious work. That's right, man. You can't hate this work. Because this is the only work, man, that's gonna actually lead to life. See, all this other work. That people are doing in this society, bro. It's in vain, man. It's like today. I just got off of work. All right. Building up another another man's uh name, his empire. You know, and shit finna, you know, Lord finna burn all this all the works and everything they're in up, man. As it says in Peter, second Peter third chapter. All right, but this is the only work that's gonna be that's fruitful, man. So this is why we shouldn't hate it, because this is gonna transfer into the kingdom to come. And we're gonna be able to look back. You know, and enjoy the fruits, you know, of our work, man. We're gonna be like, man, you know, I'm hey, I'm glad I put them bricks in, man. You know what I'm saying? So Sirach 7 and 15, hate not laborious work, neither husbandry. And what's husbandry? Right? Uh basically planting seeds. Right. And what's the seeds that we're planting? The seed of the word. Neither husbandry, which the most high have ordained. That's right. And it all goes back to what? Adam. Right? Because Adam. All right, his job was to do what to, 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 to keep the earth. All right, <clears throat> and we were cursed, you know, to work. What is that? Uh, Genesis, the third chapter, I believe. All right, <clears throat> after we had uh went off, all right, he says, Now you got to get your bread by the sweat of your brow, you know. But it was all part of the Lord's design, all right, because he didn't want us to be, you know, what I'm saying, uh, uh, ungrateful, you know, brats, man, you know, on, on the throne. No, we're gonna have to work for it. You know what I'm saying that although it's all by predestination, but for the movie's sake, you know what I'm saying? For your role, say you're gonna have you gonna have to work. And you can't hate it. So let's go back here, Sirach the sixth chapter, and 21st verse in the GNT. 
uh, her requirements are a burden heavier than they are willing to bear, and they quickly lay them aside. And once again, those requirements, Matthew 11 and 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. So really, this work, right, should really be rest. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, <laughs> I look forward to, you know, feeding the flock. I look forward to going to camp. You know, it's rest. It's rest, man. So it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But for undisciplined people, it's the complete opposite. It's, it's, it's hard and it's heavy. All right. But there are times, you know, there are times to where, you know, it, it does get difficult. You know, just in my, because I'm still a babe in this thing. You know, there are times, man, to where, you you know, you kind of get in the, in the slump. But nonetheless, we got more than enough examples, man, to look back to. You know, examples in the Bible and even living examples that we got today. You know, our apostles and our elders, right, brothers, you know, uh, you know, the elders in our camp, the brothers in our camp. And this is the importance of a, a staying plugged in the body. You know what I'm saying? While we can still fellowship, you know, and, uh, and sharpen each other up. So it says her requirements are a burden heavier than they are willing to bear, and they quickly lay them aside. Discipline means just that. Discipline. And not many people are able to discipline themselves. Woo! See? Because in our culture, man, discipline was heavy. Discipline was, is important in our culture. This is why fasting is, is, is implemented in our culture. Fasting teaches what? Discipline. Yeah, you hungry, but you're you gonna eat that, you're gonna eat that uh that chicken wing, that leftover uh wing stop from last night, that garlic parmesan. You may see your rib, you know, your woman, she just warmed the shit up. Hey, <laughs> are you disciplined? You know what I'm saying? But it's all spiritual. The Lord is building us up, man. Let's grab that word discipline because it says discipline means just that. Discipline. So let's get that word real quick. Discipline. We'll wrap it up. It says uh, penitential chastisement. Yeah, you pretty much chastising yourself. Going back to what? Mortifying the deeds of the flesh. Punishment for the sake of correction. That's right. Because our flesh, right, once again, that Greek word flesh is sarx, which means animal nature within man. So we're pretty much, you know, through the spirit of power, we have Bashamah Shah, beating that animal nature, beating the beastly nature out, out of us, man. And the Lord is ultimately doing it, <laughs> doing it to us, man. You know? And that's why we got to love it. It hurts. But we got to rejoice when it happens, man. Because, we, hey, man, we don't want to be in the same lot at these at these people, man, in the times that we're coming into. These people are about to lose tremendously. And they deserve it because they're nothing but natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. They reacted off of every carnal impulse, right? They did whatever the fuck they wanted to do, whenever they wanted to do it, however they wanted to do it. They did anybody they ever wanted to do. All right. So it says discipline, physical punishment, teaching. Woo! So teaching. All right. Teaching is discipline. And that's why, once again, all right, uh, the followers of Yahweh Shah were known as what? Disciples. See, that word, this discipline looks just like what? Disciple. So it's being a disciple of Yahweh Shah. There's going to be chastisement. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be uh, punishment. Why? So we could come back into our godlike status. It says instruction given, teaching, learning, knowledge, pupil, student, follower. Woo, beautiful. Oh, see, that it even says it right here. Let me zoom in for you. It says follower, disciple. Come on, man. So that wraps it up right there. You know, but you know, hey man, just just meditate upon that. I know I'm a I'ma still be meditating upon this, man. This is this is what's needed to get the hell up out of here, man. It's discipline. And this is what the so-called white man, Esau Edom, does not want the Israelites to have, man. It's discipline. Because he's used to niggas just, you know what I'm saying, just being, you know, uh, trendy. Israelites are known for being trendy. You know what I'm saying? The dances, jobs, uh, 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 particular, you know, religions, you know? <laughs> No, this you can't you can't treat this truth as a trend, man. 
this is a discipline this is a, a lifestyle you know a have a habitual you know lifestyle man you know so but nonetheless hope you occupy aqua for edified until next time, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakhadash. I want to give double honors to the apostle, elders of Great Millstone, DTA, Baba Ball, Kwame Sharala, Shalom.